time to get into composites. So composites are uh, very, again, similar, you know, essentially same theory uh, that we've been kind of uh, developing throughout this course and the previous 13 lectures can be applied to composite materials. So I think people, and actually at the beginning of this course, we kind of motivated why polymers are uh, becoming a dominant, uh, basically, type of materials when we're looking at new applications and uh, basically trying to figure out high strength to density ratio materials. So composites are very attractive because they combine two different types um, of materials. So one or more than one type of material. Uh, and typically, it's going to be involved a matrix material. So when we look at composites, we're looking at same solute, solvent. So we know that from our, our Higgins theory. So solute, solvent, you'll also kind of hear this called as the matrix material in composites. The solute or the smaller, the you know, the sol, you know, the solvent is also your major component. Your major component, your minor component here. Um, typically this will have a Young's modulus that is lower. The solute will also be called your minor component, a fiber, it could be a precipitate, precipitate, or it could be a particle. Okay, it's going to be right, written down here. Um, and this will typically have a much higher Young's modulus. So again, you're combining a material uh, that has, again, a lower density because you're using typically, you know, softer, or, you know, not softer, but uh, less stiff uh, materials, uh, more compliant materials like polymers that are again, a lower density and you combine it with a stiff material as well. So you're able to get a high strength to density ratio because of this composite type material. So that's kind of the new generation of materials that are becoming very popular and why polymers and why this course is so important in my opinion. But anyways, <laughs> so our matrix material is going to be the major component uh, and then again, it's major in terms of volume fraction. So for here, volume fraction much higher than volume fraction here. Um, and this can be reinforced by, again, a stiffer or tougher again, uh, material than the matrix material. It's going to be basically a particle, a fiber, a precipitate. Uh, again, you could kind of think of these composites like metal foams, concrete, you know, ECMs. There's lot, tons of examples, lots of composite materials. Bone uh, is a composite material as well. So let's go ahead and uh, first, let's think about a very simple composite, or not a simple composite, but let's think about a composite material that has you know, some... Uh, it's composed of a matrix, it has some elastic modulus here, and some volume fraction F here. Um, also, let's look at the, again, the minor component, the fiber, or the particle at this point, some volume fraction here. And our total composite modulus will be the sum of these two different contributions. Uh, this polymer, or this composite material, and let's look at uh, what is the composite, you know, what is the stiffness of the composite going to be if we pull in the transverse direction, uh, with respect to our axial direction of the fibers, or if we pull in the, um, uh, basically along that axial direction. So let's take a look first at our, so this is our composite again. There's some matrix in between here. You could kind of clearly see the fibers as well. So let's look at what the stiffness of our composite will be if we pull either longitudinally or axially or transversely. So first, what do you think is gonna be have a higher modulus? If I pull in the longitudinal or the axial direction or the transverse direction? Well, in the longitudinal direction, right? Why? Well, because my fibers are aligned with that direction. So if I'm pulling along the stiffer direction material, it's going to be stiffer. If I pull transverse, uh, it is going to be less uh, stiff. Again, hopefully that makes sense kind of uh, intuitively, and it also kind of follows from our discussion of like these anisotropic materials, right? So we know that for titanium, for example, so my titanium, my C cell, along this long direction, we saw that my Young's modulus here was much greater than in this either like the A or the B direction in your unit cell for hexagonal close pack materials. So my E sub C was greater than my E A or my E B. So that's what we kind of expect. So let's kind of derive that out um, ourselves. So if we pull, uh, if we pull in the uh, transverse direction, what's going to happen here? So if I pull in the transverse direction, are my basically are my strains going to be the same? No, they're not going to be the same. Uh, but my stresses will be. So if I pull in this transverse direction and I take a slice here, you'll see that the area is going to be constant, basically per volume fraction. You know, per, uh, per volume fraction. So if I pull in the transverse direction, my stresses will be the same in the matrix and the fiber, 
but my strings, I will have to add them together. Uh, so I will have to add those together and then I can kind of rewrite this expression here, similar to what we did for the Kelvin white model. So that was the real application of what was happening there. So once I have the stress of my composite, uh, or actually the strain of my composite right here, I can rewrite and just, uh, you could kind of see here, I could rewrite this expression uh, and get the Young's modulus or the stiffness of my total composite, which is given by this expression right here. So again, very similar, same idea that we were working with previously um, for our, uh, uh, same idea that we were working with previously for our Kelvin white models. So you can kind of see this expression right here. If you instead pull parallel to the fiber direction, it's kind of the same idea. Now we're not working in series, like, you know, uh, in, in the terms of the transverse direction, we're now working in parallel. So if I pull longitudinally, the strain in both my fiber and my matrix are going to be equal. So now the strains are equal, but the stresses will not be. Why? Because if I cut, you know, if I cut in this from uh, in this direction here, the surface area is not going to be the same. Uh, so you know, my stresses are not going to be the same as well. So here, my strains are the same. My stresses are different. And now I could simply rewrite this expression here and I could find the Young's modulus of my composite in parallel to the fiber direction or the axial direction right here. So that's just my expression. If we plot those two, you can see that our intuition matches. So in the transverse direction, you see we're always, except for our, our end conditions, we're always, equal, we're always less than our axial direction. So why are we go, uh, going through this kind of idea? I mean, it's very similar to what we did for Kelvin Voigt. Well, the reason is because we want to be able to kind of think about, you know, how do we write the uh, our composite mechanics problems, just like we've done previously uh, when we have a complex stress state, how do we treat these composite materials? So to do that, we are going to invoke uh, way back, we kind of skipped over it briefly, but now we're going to go back to our anisotropic material because this example shows that these composite materials are anisotropic, i.e. their material properties will vary depending on the direction that we uh, pull that material in or stress that material in. So we're going to invoke this anisotropic, you know, horrible matrix that we <laughs> or tensor that we saw uh, previously. Uh, but we'll see we're going to simplify this problem down and we're going to be able to kind of solve mechanics problems using these composite materials. So it's going to involve some linear algebra, but uh, we'll be able to get through that together. So that's about it. I'll see you all in the next video, and we will kind of break down how we're going to solve these problems uh, in this course. Thanks. Bye.